What's up YouTube? Welcome to what is a little bit of a tradition on my channel and that is a prelude episode. I'm going to try to keep it short a little bit but uh, this is going to be the first of my daily uploaded series of uh, my Hungarian playthrough and uh, I mentioned it in the past and I'll go ahead and mention it again that um, what kind of has inspired my let's play my previous one but also this one even though i don't think you know there's a exactly a high demand for let's plays but um yeah it's the old the olden days where i used to just pick a nation and play it and see how well i could do and uh one of my preferred nations was the the mighty ungrin um the unyadi so Sweet, I'm so looking forward to this. And uh, I always actually wanted to conquer the world on Hungary. Uh, I've conquered the world on very hard difficulty, as uh, many of my followers will know. And quite frankly, um, I actually think Hungary is really strong. Really, really, really strong. And it's not that they are, you know, uh, overpowered or anything like that. It's basically exploiting the empire. Um, something that's really interesting about playing a nation that's uh, outside of the Empire initially is that you essentially get Austria for free, you know, as opposed to playing Austria. You inherit all of Austria freely, including the land that he will uh, develop. And uh, Hungary is one of the few nations, when you compare him to nations that uh, you would consider to be objectively more powerful, like perhaps Poland or France... He is one of the few nations that can actually just freely expand, or hopefully freely expand into Italy, and therefore keep the, all of this development inside the empire as well. And uh, that's that's one thing that I'm going to really look forward to doing. And because of that, because he's so, um, you know, if I do say so myself, powerful, hungry... Um, I'm actually going to be trying to set my heights higher, and I'm going to be trying to acquire the One Faith achievement, but I'm also going to try to set my own personal best and uh, One Tag the world, which I've never done before. Now, mind you, a, a reoccurring, a constant theme of my whole channel is that we do everything legit here. I'm sure that if I uh, took advantage of exploits in the past, I could have uh, achieved these, these things. And uh, also, the game used to be easy in the past, you know, in some ways. But what can you do? We're playing now, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I I really enjoy the game at the moment. So, hopefully this prelude is not going to drag on too long, but I'm going to be uploading daily videos. And unlike my uh, previous series, which kind of got me down a little bit, honestly... Um, we're in the, you know, updated patch, so we're, we're good on that regard, and that means that I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to upload daily or near daily, in addition to uploading my other videos that I'm working on as well. So this series is not going to detract from my channel, I'm hoping. And uh, just so you guys know, because I know people who watch my my the whole series are usually... You know, I would say that we're a little bit more intimate, you know, so you guys are probably willing to hear, like, explanations and things like that. Um, I'm going to be probably recording, like, the way that I have it in my mind. Things always don't always work out that way, but uh, I'm probably going to try to do kind of, like, one recording session a week or, or around that. So I am going to be uploading in, in bulk, at, like... If each episode is only like 30 minutes, then, you know, I might be able to record like three and a half hours or something like that in one big session and then upload them throughout the week. And uh, yeah, so each week, if you guys comment, like, keep in mind, I'm going to have a bit of a backlog of videos, but at the same time, um, I will read what you guys post and I will be able to, like if it was, for example, the seventh video, this is episode seven, I suppose, if you commented on that, then I'd probably be uh, reading that before I shoot the next batch of videos, if that makes sense. So I will actually be able to respond in some cases to, to what you guys are saying and suggesting. Um, but enough about that. I'm going to go ahead and talk about 
the method in which I want to try to achieve this, and then um, I'll go ahead and talk about my ideas. And uh, the method is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be abusing the empire. Um, what I'm going to be doing uh, initially is actually freeing... I'll have a little bit of a think about it. I'm not 100% sure right now. But uh, we'll, be, we'll be releasing Transylvania. We can see here that we cannot join the empire because we need 205. Um, and relations with Austria and uh, we should be able to get 200 with time because he's going to be our ally so we need to be under 200 so uh, what I'm thinking at the moment is I'm probably going to re release Croatia and Transylvania as one province miners uh, but I, I don't know I don't know actually I might go for just Transylvania because he will be orthodox and aggressive expansion will not be so much of an issue annexing him uh, I have a little bit of a think about it but um, yeah so I plan to just just freely join the empire and as we are not a German uh, I believe that we get to maintain kingdom rank um, that's just how the game works currently uh, unless I'm under some kind of uh, illusion uh, just like Bohemia, I think we will be kingdom rank, uh, which is pretty cool, because we won't suffer from losing the diplomat. Uh, with that being said, obviously I, I intend to expand, I want to own this region, actually I think we only need these three, and all of this, and uh, we're going to add it to the empire. What I'll probably do is, hmm, let's have a think about this, I think... If we, I don't know, man, if we exclusively ally the electors, hopefully, because I'm worried about aggressive expansion, but uh, hopefully before the Shadow Kingdom event fires, this guy should have died, I would imagine. So uh, we'll become elected emperor, and then I'll try take Rome and hit the button. And then as soon as Rome asks to be free, we'll release him again. Um, that's how I'm going to try to do things, but uh, I, I did pull it off in my uh, video in the past, um, but it's going to be tough. And uh, speaking about my video in the past, I, I uploaded that video where I was in real, really good shape as the Hungarian Emperor, and the Empire was looking really stellar. One thing that I didn't know, guys, which has actually been changed, is, uh, as many of you probably know, I covered it in that video, the Empire has been buffed in a sense that the AI can actually join the Empire nowadays. Uh, they will only join, join the Empire if they feel like they need uh, the Emperor's protection from an existential threat. But um, in another way, rushing the Revoke has been dramatically nerfed, which I wasn't aware of. And I actually made a mistake unintentionally in that video where I said... If you disallow internal wars in the HRE before the Protestant leagues form, they will no longer form. But I'm under the impression that they will form now, actually. I think the only way that they will not form now is if Protestantism, or at least people who wish to start the league, was exclusively inside the empire. Uh, the reality is, is that at least England and Scandinavia, or the British Isles and Scandinavia... Uh, they go Protestant or Reformed. Um, one or the other or both will go Protestant or Reformed pretty much every game from my experience. Uh, and then you will actually have England or Denmark or even Sweden, if they're free, uh, lead the league and then the members of the Empire will actually join the league. So with that in mind, um, I'm hoping if my game is as good as my last one, I'm just not going to worry about it. Like, it's a shame that we won't be able to get, like, a 1550 revoke or anything like that. But even delayed by, like, 100 years to, like, 1650, still, it is going to be a tremendous amount of free development. You know, 1650, not worried about it. That's fine. Uh, as long as I'm doing well myself. And uh, that's one of the real... It's kind of a disadvantage initially, but it's also ultimately an advantage to playing Hungary, is that we can uh, expand into 
different religious groups, uh, which is pretty cool. So I'm hoping to really be extremely productive and, you know, just take a little bit here and there from Christians as well, making sure not to irritate the empire. And I'm hoping that by the time it's the year 1650, we are just an absolute uh, Eastern European beast. And that we can uh, then revoke as well. And uh, something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different as an, a, a typical HRE run that I usually don't do. And that's, I'm actually going to reform, I'm going to uh, pass this sooner rather than later and uh, part of the reason I'm going to do that is because quite frankly the tedium of like I've played as the HRE like my my world conquest on very hard difficulty I remember I added all of the Balkan regions to the HRE as independent states as free princes and then I gave each nation like we had like Moria, uh, Achia, I think we had Athens or Byzantium, and we gave them each a colony for them to expand, to convert and, and core up and so on, that we could integrate for free. But guys, the tedium just becomes unreal. Like, I mean, I'm talking about hours. It, it actually becomes hours of when you hit this button... Um, it just goes on and on and on. The rearranging your merchants, you know, because you will usually move your trade port to Genoa. Rearranging your merchants, uh, adding your 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 st states, or your territories, or stating them up, um, managing your estates, um, you know, deleting forts, deleting infantry, consolidating infantry, uh, good you know, compositions, it just goes on and on and on and on and on to the extent that it actually drains some of the fun, for sure. Like, I can imagine that I'll shoot an episode of, like, an hour or two episodes and I'll still be doing the same thing. And that's part of the reason we're going to do it, even though, you know, the the Vassal Swarm is stronger for the most part. Um, I will be doing it a little bit earlier. I'm hoping that both before we uh, revoke... Maybe we have fed Bohemia and or a Saxon or Prussian a lot of Eastern Europe. Uh, maybe some of Scandinavia to a German as well. And uh, maybe maybe France. Maybe. I don't know. We will see. Uh, to some of the uh, uh, French. A French member of the empire as well. Um, hopefully before we even revoke. And then once revoking... I will exploit it to some extent for sh for sure, like continue to to feed Bohemia and or a, a German, as well as like take a big chunk and free feed it to a French nation. But I'm just not going to go, you know, I'm not going to take it to the maximum degree. We're going to become the HRE, uh, yeah, sooner rather than later. I expect before the six year uh, 1700, but we'll see how things go. Uh, with that being said, I want to talk about my idea groups. Um, I'm really excited about the new aristocratic ideas. I mean, I have considered taking them in the past. One of the main things that I like about them is this, the yearly army tradition decay and yearly naval tradition. I am actually going to skip offensive, which I usually don't do, but I'm going to do it this time because I'm just going to, we're going to go for quality, defensive, and aristocratic. And then maybe offensive, you know, as our last idea if we have time or whatever. But yeah, I'm going to love stacking the yearly army tradition decay, the yearly army tradition, and the yearly army tradition. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to that. For those of you who don't know, this gives you yearly absolutionism, which is a, a modifier which is uh, unlocked in the age of absolutionism. And uh, the... The modifier is very strong. It's very strong. It helps with um, admin efficiency and so on, and uh, I think discipline and other things. Uh, so yearly admin uh, absolutionism is, is pretty good. Unfortunately, I do think aristocratic ideas are still not that good, but it has become kind of an enabler um, where it enables you to do more than you otherwise wouldn't be able to do, and therefore um, it's kind of uh, necessary but yeah, I'm really liking the way it looks at the moment. So far, this leader siege, at least plus one leader siege, is going to help us without the um, you know siege ability here, 
because we're going to be missing out on that. Um, and the available mercenaries is pretty cool because uh, we are, of course, hungry and we're going to go for the Black Army, which gives us uh, discipline. Um, since since they I made that video and I said, like, pff, pff, the uh, Black Army doesn't look that good, they've actually buffed it. I think it only reduces your force limit by 5% now. So if you had 100 forces, it would be 95. And uh, it basically gives you a lot of buffs, like, uh, I think, discipline to your mercenaries. So that's almost a flat buff. Um, looking forward to that. I mean, 5 force limit is so worth. I'm pretty sure it's a big buff now. And uh, with that in mind, we're going to be funding mercenaries. So that's 20% more available. And uh, naturally, we're going to be taking administrative ideas, which reduces the uh, maintenance, the cost, and the uh, available as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool to stack together. And uh, I was thinking about it, guys. We're going to be taking this, which is 10% reduced tech cost. Pretty nice, but, you know, whatever. And I am going to go, be going for administrative, because the core reduction, that's 10% reduced technology. And I was thinking, screw it, man. One thing that is really awkward about this game is I almost always take influence because it's it's just such a good idea. And one thing that I always regret is that my second idea group for diplomacy is usually exploration or, like, depending on who I am, something is really strong. And I always hate the fact that I don't have diplomacy. And I always want diplomacy ideas. But by the late game, I never find available Diplo points. I'm always starved by Diplo points because we end up PUing Russia or something and I can never... Anyway, the point is I've been inspired because we're going aristocratic 10% reduction, administrative 10% reduction. I thought, screw it. I'm going to go Diplo first idea instead of influence. And obviously the... Uh, Deploy annexation cost here and the aggressive expansion. Those are the real great things about influence, in my opinion. Really, those are the two. Um, but, you know, th this is going to be really beneficial, in my opinion, not only to have when I desperately want it, but uh, to take it as a first idea, it's going to reduce the tech cost. So I hope I don't regret that. But, you know, we don't get aggressive expansion reduction, but at least we get relations improved plus 25%. If we can keep our prestige high and so on, the aggressive expansion will uh, diminish, you know, the malice. So, <coughs> um, I might change my mind, but I think I'm going to go Diplo, Religious, Aristocratic, Administrative. Tell me what you guys think, although I actually won't see what you guys think until I've played uh, quite um, recorded a few episodes but um the the other thing is aristocratic um the yearly absolutionism doesn't come around until later so we could actually go defensive we could go diplomatic religious defensive and then pick that up later um I have to see what I think but interestingly this does give you cavalry combat ability and uh, as Hungary, we've got the 20% uh, here. C combined with our Cossacks being an Eastern nation, we could actually get the Winged Hussars without playing Poland, I think, which is interesting. Not too fussed about that. And uh, from there, guys, I think um, I'm going to go uh, admin ideas, mostly just for the coring cost, and we'll just tick these up. At some point, I'm sure we'll have excess admin that we're uh, not able to uh, spend. And then we're going to go, um, you know, another military idea. And I'm definitely thinking about exploration as well. We're going to be owning Italy. And uh, I think, you know, I just played a Byzantium game. And Byzantium is just so much weaker than Hungary starting out. I expect to be in much better shape. And I was compelled to take exploration in my Byzantium game. Like, it's just so, it's so nice. It's so nice if you're... You know, I usually take exploration when I'm poor, like starting out as Castile or Portugal or something, and it's quite awkward to fund the, the maintenance, but when you're making excess wealth and you're able to just afford it, it's so nice, you know, and in 20 years, it's it's paying itself off like tenfold, and you're, you're getting like uh, more and more merchants and so on, 
So I think exploration will be our second Diplo idea. Uh, yeah, and then nothing but military ideas, obviously, as we spend our admin uh, expanding into the world all over the show. Uh, probably if I uh, reach down here, we'll be colonizing from here, the Red Sea, into like Australia, etc. But uh, I'm not sure, guys. I, I hope I can do it. I hope I can one tag the whole world. We're definitely going to be going for, you know, with the new absolutionism, um, you can you can core even more land in a single war. And I'm definitely going to be going for weakening the Western powers, feeding it to the HRE, integrating it all for free, becoming an absolute juggernaut, and then just, boom, take out France, all of his colony, take out England, all of his colonies, same with Spain, same with Portugal, uh, extremely rapido and uh, nice and decisive. I'm really looking forward to it. Going to be um, gunning it for that, that uh, Russian throne. I find that Russia, they often struggle for diplomatic relations. And uh, yeah, it's somewhat feasible, I would say, to actually PU them. I, I PU Russia with quite some frequency. And that would be the dream in that scenario. If I could expand into the Asians and, and PU Russia, that would be the real dream. But uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and begin recording this series. Uh, one last thing. I just want to say that the, you know, there's a lot of um, lacking of viewer retention in like a series like this. And that's to be expected. Like I completely understand. But I just want to say that sort of the least viewed videos on my Brandenburg Let's Play are near a thousand a thousand people who have watched almost every single video and that just blows my mind i just want to let you guys know that i appreciate you like that's crazy to me and uh yeah i can't believe it like you know in terms of doing this for a living or something like that it's it's not that much but regardless of how uh valuable it is monetarily like, a thousand people watching me do what I do, to me, is, is just mind-blowing. And uh, thank you guys very much for being here, and I hope you enjoy the series. Let's do it. We're going to unite Europe and the entire world. Oh, I'm going to do my damnedest. I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, I'll see you in the first episode.